Well, good evening, church family, and those of you from our community or wherever you may be joining us from, from tonight. We're thankful to have you join us for this time we call Midweek Manna, a chance to pause in the middle of the week and reflect on God's Word together. We hope and trust your week is going well to this point. I feel, I feel most of you probably have seen the news, at least from this past week, of the other day when a representative from Tennessee by the name of John Rose spoke on the House floor and gave a speech and he was sharing his thoughts and comments and opinions on the trial from former President Trump last week. But the news was not as much about the speech that he gave or what he said in the speech but more about the aspect of what was going on during his speech. As you did see on the news, he had his six-year-old son with him and brought his six-year-old son with him on the house floor and actually seated him, had him sit down right behind him as he gave his speech. Now, all of his parents can discuss and talk about the wisdom in doing that, but he did do that. You appreciate him, obviously, bringing his son with him to work. Well, his six-year-old son named Guy, as he was doing the speech, if you look at it and watch the video, he initially just smiled at the camera. And then after he smiled at the camera, he gave some funny faces and rolled his eyes a, a little bit and started doing some motions with his hands. And it called the attention of everybody, of course, and it's seen in the news media, news reports, which is where I first saw it, I think it was in Savannah Guthrie on the Today Show, said what I'm sure most of us were thinking, you wish you were sitting behind every politician that spoke, might just give that kind of looks and, and make it somewhat humorous. And of course we said that in a lighthearted way, we can all re relate to that. But it's interesting what his dad had to say, Representative Rose said he apparently posted on his Twitter or X account as it's called now, and he basically said something to the effect of, this is what I get for telling my six-year-old son for smiling at his younger brother, Sam. And after he said that, and I went back and watched the video, you could see what was happening. That guy, the six-year-old son, actually when he first sat down, all he did was smile. He smiled at the camera. And did so actually, I was pretty amazed for a number of seconds. And then his six-year-old self kicked in, and that's when he started making the faces and rolling his eyes and sticking his tongue out. And actually what we found out that what he was doing with his hands was he was spelling out the letters S-A-M for Sam. And what, maybe I'm giving him too much credit, but it seems to me that what Guy was doing, six-year-old Guy was doing, was not just trying to smile at his younger brother, he was trying to make his younger brother laugh. And his focus as he looked at the camera, maybe it was not as much on everybody's watching me, but he was focused on his younger brother, Sam. In fact, one of the reporters asked him later in the report I saw, did you know or think he'd become a, a star after this? And in his innocent self, he said, of course, no. It was obviously a humorous moment. It's made for a feel-good story at a time that we need feel-good stories, it seems like, in our country, which we can make that statement probably every week. And there's something to be said about his dad's focus by all accounts and looking at the videos that I've looked at, his dad had no idea what was going on behind him. Of course, we can discuss again the wisdom of that, but he, he remained focused on his speech, remained focused on his task at hand, and he did not let anything distract him from doing what he needed to do. And obviously there's a lesson to be said about that. But I want to focus on that six-year-old son for a moment. And if Representative Rose was being honest, which there's no reason to think he was not, and what he instructed his son to do, I think we can make a case that his son was doing really what his father asked him to do. Again, it said he told his son just to sit and smile at his younger brother Sam, and initially, again, initially anyway, that's what you see him doing. You see him smiling. And then as I mentioned earlier, you see that six-year-old come in and the distractions and doing the things that he did. But through it all, by all appearances anyway, he was indeed trying to smile and maybe make his younger brother laugh. 
and speak to him almost directly. You know, there's lots of things we can think about with that, but obviously we know how Jesus felt about children and think about what he said in Matthew chapter 18 when he said, at that time the disciple came to Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And in verse two, in calling to him a child, he put him in the midst of them and said, Surely I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Well known passage, a passage we discuss and talk about quite often, and the aspect of the faith of little children, the humility, as Jesus mentioned, of little children, the trust of little children. But even in their good moments, the obedience of little children, the children trying to do what their parents asked them to do. And I think what Guy may have been doing even the other day is simply doing what his dad, his father, asked him to do. And that was to smile at his younger brother, Sam. And doing things lets him know that they were indeed thinking about him. And that's what we were called on to do. Think about what John said in 1 John chapter 2. When John writes this, he says, My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is a perpetuation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And by this we know that we have come to know him. Listen to this. If we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, he is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. John goes on to say, By this we may know that we are in him. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. John says very poignant thoughts here and comments, but basically what he says is, all right, you say, you know God, you feel like you know him, you know even Jesus Christ. Well, let's check how well do you know him. Do you do what your father asks you to do? Do you follow the example of Jesus? And as Jesus did the things his father asked him to do, that's how we know that we know him. And if you put the little two thoughts together, when we talk, Jesus talks about becoming like a little child. So many elements of that, and of course, I'm not trying to say little children are perfect. We all know they're not, just like we are not perfect. We also know that they're very innocent. And in the simplest form in faith, they are trying to do the things their parents ask them to do. And they are obeying them in their good moments. Not all moments are good, I understand that, as a parent. But in their good moments, they are trying to do that. And they are trying to walk as Jesus walked. One of the memories I always will have of my oldest son, Will, is when he was young and I walked into his bathroom one day and he was looking at the mirror and I looked down and he had my shoes on. And of course, he was doing that in a joking way and didn't necessarily know what he was doing. But there's that image of trying to walk in my shoes. And... Not to say that he is doing that now, I think he's doing his own path, he is certainly his own personality, but he has a faith in God and Jesus that I am thankful for as he's trying to live that out. But that's what John says we're called on to do. We're supposed to walk the way that Jesus walked. That's how we know God. We are to be obedient to him. And as little children are obedient to parents, as little children have that innocence about them, as little children just smile at a camera like the father tells them to smile or makes the little brother laugh as the father tries to initiate. Maybe not the exact way the father was thinking, but that is how we as children of God are supposed to do. We're supposed to listen to what our father tells us and do the things that he tells us to do, which ultimately, as John says, mean, we're supposed to walk the way that Jesus walked. But just a reminder for us tonight and thoughts for us tonight from the middle of the week as we look at that story. If you haven't seen that story, I encourage you to go back and look at it and look over it as a humorous story. It's a great lighthearted moment, as I said 
earlier, but let it also be a good reminder to us that just like innocent children and little children, we too need to make sure we listen to our Father above. Well, again, we thank you for taking a few moments to be with us tonight here in the middle of a week. I'm sure a busy week for you, and it's good to have this opportunity to share thoughts together and reflect on God's Word together. And for those in our church family, of course, we always like being together, but in person, and when we are unable to be together in person, thankful to have this mode in which we can be together. And thank you for joining us. There may be some of you that are not familiar with our Collegedale family. Maybe you're a quote-unquote guest of Collegedale watching one of our recordings for the first time, or maybe you're second or fifth or even tenth time watching it, but you're not connected with us. We really would love to hear from you. We'd love to connect with you. You can call our church office. You can send us an email. You can send us a message on Facebook, Instagram. Follow us in those ways, a number of ways to connect with us. We certainly love an opportunity to do that and hear from you and share with you more about our Collegedale family. And we, of course, do remind everybody and encourage everyone to join us for our time together this Sunday. We assemble for classes, Bible classes at 9 a.m. at classes for all ages. And then we do assemble for worship here in the auditorium at 10 a.m. We'd love to have you join us in person. But if you're unable to join us in person, we will be live streaming our worship through our Collegedale YouTube channel at 10 a.m. Again, thank you for taking a few moments to be with us tonight. We hope and trust you have a blessed rest of the week. Let's close our thoughts tonight in prayer. Father, we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for just having time to be with you. We thank you for reminders from your word and the great truths we learn in it and having a reminder lived out about being like a little child and little children and through the imperfections of a little child, just like our imperfections, still them striving to do the things that parents tell them to do or be humble and trustworthy, all the thoughts that we can have. And help us as we see and around little children hear stories like the one we shared tonight to always be reminded becoming like a little child and entering your kingdom. Father, we know tonight as we gather, so many folks that we know that continue to hurt or continue to go through difficult times with treatments or recoveries or dealing with loss of loved ones or just dealing with tough times in life right now, we ask you to wrap your arms around them, you get in touch to be with them, and we lift them all to you. We do continue to be mindful of those throughout our country and really other places that are dealing with the after effects of storms, natural disasters. We lift those to you in a very special way. We continue to be mindful of the ongoing situations and conflicts we have in our, in our world. We pray for peace. We pray for protection and safety in all those situations. And Father, as always, we do pray for the leaders of our community and our state our nation and our world and their minds and hearts be open to you in a way that they will make decisions that will allow us as your people to live the kind of lives you desire us to live and have the opportunities to share with others the good news about your son Jesus and it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen.